we both do not draw Ooh, each other wait. first round, we get a buy in the Man, second. It would be walking out. Of it's gonna be stage. Like this, because now it'll be me, you, and Johnny, <laughs> yeah. our own little team. How lucky did Johnny get? Yeah. 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 I yeah. Mean, yeah. Cut off. Yeah. The American reality television series Street Outlaws premiered on Discovery Channel in June 2013. Despite initial doubt about the show's potential, it succeeded in surprising everyone and eventually received the green light for 10 seasons. The show continues to intrigue viewers and at the end of the 10th season, Discovery Channel agreed to keep it on air for three more seasons. With the conclusion of the 13th season on the 13th of May 2019, Street Outlaw's popularity among petrol heads remains undisputed, and following its success, the show has inspired a video game by the same name, which was released on a variety of platforms in 2019. The show documents the activities of illegal street racers in Oklahoma, who many believe to possess the fastest street rods in the United States. The show is filmed in various locations across the state, despite the obvious potential of physical dangers, plus those that local laws present, and the actions taken against the show by racing unions. Street Outlaws follows both the racers' ongoing competition to achieve top status on a top 10 list, as well as the preparations and car modifications before each race. A simple reminder how to enter our brand new giveaway. We will be giving away either iPhone Max, iPad Mini, or MacBook Pro. It's really your choice. All you have to do is watch the full video, leave a like, comment the keyword hidden in the video, subscribe, and turn on notifications to enter the giveaway. It's really that simple. As can be expected, a show that documents illegal activity has received its fair share of negative attention. However, the very reason why the show stays on the air is a dark secret the producers would rather keep quiet. As such, Street Outlaws is packed to the brim with intriguing behind-the-scenes facts that will both interest and entertain its octane addicts. In fact, when it comes to keeping secrets and creating controversy, Street Outlaws can easily be considered among the busiest reality series airing on Discovery Channel. From run-ins with the law and other organizations to reality manipulation at its finest, Street Outlaws is guilty of it all. When a show becomes popular, it is bound to attract all kinds of attention, but in the case of Street Outlaws, some of the attention it drew wasn't all for the better. While fame may have afforded the racers featured on the show numbers of new fans, unfortunately, it has also drawn the attention of people who were dissatisfied with the message the show broadcasts. In 2015, the National Hot Rod Association NHRA, protested against the show, going so far as to threaten the drivers with revoking their racing licenses. Naturally, the racers didn't take kindly to the actions of the NHRA, replying with plenty of backlash, and despite the threats, they continue to race and appear in the show. However, NHRA's standpoint is not unfounded, since they have a legitimate reason to protest against the show. Their main concern was that legal drivers supported and progressed illegal racing, which is not only against the law, but can be potentially dangerous. In response to the show's backlash, the head of the NHRA's PR division, Gino Eifler, stated that the organization only wanted to prevent the substantial growth of illegal street racing that the show undoubtedly popularized. He hoped that the drivers would do the right thing and not take it personally, but his efforts have so far been met with contempt. Because the show depicts the illegal activities of street rod racing, many of the racers who were approached for the show obviously harbored initial doubts about the legitimacy of the production, believing that the producers were undercover police officers conducting a sting operation. One racer, Joe Woods, who competes under the pseudonym Dominator, was absolutely skeptical of the producers, even refusing to take part in the initial filming until they eventually convinced him that the show was not a police sting operation. Despite their efforts, Joe remained suspicious of the producers for a long time, but much to his fortune, instead of ending up in jail, Dominator and his crew became reality superstars. Considering the impact Joe made with his fierce competitive attitude, the show could have been the failure its producers half expected it to be had Joe declined to appear on camera. However, despite Joe's concerns, the show does not actually break any laws, and despite what it wants fans to believe, nothing the audience sees can be considered illegal. Thus, ironic as it may be, Joe's suspicions were as unfounded as most conspiracy theories. The show's presentation of supposed illegal street rod racing is nothing more than hyped-up showmanship intended to grab the audience's attention and draw in more viewers. Yet the question remains, how can the show legalize something still considered illegal in the state of Oklahoma? Well, it's simple really. In order to keep the Discovery Channel off the front pages of newspapers and out of trouble with local law enforcement, the producers had to seek simple ways of making the races legal. While it may detract from both the name of the show and its selling point, at least nobody would get into hot water. Before each race, the producers would apply for the necessary permission to race in each of the cities or towns they wished to film in, and the streets occupied for each race would be closed off for private use. During some of the racing events, local police would often attend the show to ensure everything was as legal as it could possibly be and to keep everybody safe from potential danger. As a result, many drivers felt that the events lacked the thrill they have come to love about street racing, often forcing them to seek adrenaline at other, more illegal racing events. 
The show's main focus might be the racing events, but the drivers' cars gain quite a bit of attention as well. And as a result, some cars have been stolen, either for joyrides or value. Many of the cars used by the drivers are vintage models, and although pumped up for racing, the car's worth can reach into the triple figures. One such car, James the Reaper Goad's 1955 vintage Chevrolet, valued at an estimated $175,000, became the target of unidentified thieves. The Reaper built his car up from scratch, spending the better part of several years to achieve the excellence his reputation and his car affords him. James even believed that no one would strip his Chevy for parts, mostly because all the parts fitted on the muscle car come model-specific and would not be of any value to anyone with any other vehicle, nor could they sell it since everyone would know to whom the Chevy belonged. After disappearing for two days, police returned James's car, and despite being in poor condition, it could still operate. Another racer, David Bird Jones, lost property worth an estimated $100,000 to plundering and theft. His vintage 1967 Chevrolet Camaro became the target of crooks and unfortunately, unlike James, David didn't get his car back. In 2015, Oklahoma police uncovered the operations of a syndicate specializing in the theft of engines. Among the many charges brought against the syndicate, the theft of two engines worth about $500,000 was of primary concern to the local law enforcement. Among the men arrested, police implicated occasional racer Ronnie Pollard as a small-time member of the syndicate, leading to his arrest alongside three other men. The leader of the syndicate, a man named Michael Moore, was a long-time suspect thought to be part of numerous syndicates operating in the state of Oklahoma, who eluded the police for many years. Pollard was arrested two weeks before the mastermind behind the syndicate was apprehended and certainly got off easier than more. However, Ronnie was not the only street outlaw star implicated in serious crime. Another part-time driver, Pass Christian, was arrested on several drug-related charges, possession of firearms, and one count of conspiracy. Christian pleaded guilty to charges of drug trafficking, admitting that he stockpiled methamphetamine with the intent to sell. The law also accused Christian of using his workshop as a front for illegal activities. It seems that Pass will not return to the show anytime soon. One of the drivers featured on the show, Izzy Valenzuela, faced two counts of murder after an unfortunate accident during an illegal race claimed the lives of two bystanders. Initially, Izzy denied the accusations, claiming that at the time of the accident, he was working in his garage. However, the 60 witnesses to the race claimed that Izzy drove the car that caused the accident, now dubbed the Killer Mustang, giving authorities enough reason to doubt Valenzuela's alibi. Then upon further investigation, police discovered that Izzy did not in fact drive the car, despite being the owner of the vehicle. The driver implicated in the unfortunate accident, identified as Gary Balian, happened to borrow the Mustang from Izzy. Because the racing event was declared illegal, Gary received a 12-year sentence on two charges of murder. Fortunately for Izzy at least, the truth surfaced and he was allowed to go free. Nonetheless, the saying speed kills is true and the reason why illegal racing events are so dangerous. Hopefully those involved in the misfortune learn their lesson and will not participate in illegal racing events ever again. Racing is one of the most dangerous careers to undertake, and this includes the simplified form of drag racing. While Formula 1 is known for the frequent accidents caught on camera, drag racing can be equally as dangerous and in many cases could result in fatalities. One driver, affectionately known as Daddy Dave Comstock, is among the many men who can attest to the dangers involved. During a preparation race, for which no precautions were applied to the road, Dave had an unfortunate accident, flipping his car six times and eventually crashing into a wall. Although Dave survived the accident, he nonetheless needed emergency care after suffering a bruised lung and concussion. However, his car ended up in far worse condition. Another accident was even caught on film, this time involving two drivers, namely Brian Chucky Davis and frequent star Big Chief. The Chief's car accidentally crossed lanes, and the resulting incident sent both cars flipping into the air. Fortunately, both drivers made it out alive, but suffering broken bones and spinal injuries. Both required medical attention and were rushed to hospital. Sadly, viewers of Street Outlaws had to bid their final goodbyes to two stars from the show. However, despite the interest of viewers and fans, the deaths of both Butch DeMoss and Tyler Flip Pity were unrelated to racing incidents and remain obscure mysteries. Even to this day, few people know the truth behind their sudden and surprising departures. Butch passed away quietly at the age of 43 at his home, and no known causes for his death have reached the public yet. Regardless of the cause, close friends and family of Butch, as well as his many fans, were surprised by his untimely passing, since Butch had no underlying diseases and seemed fit. Tyler, who passed away at the age of 31, also surprised people with his unfortunate demise. Despite the mystery surrounding his death, some rumors persist that suggest that Flip may have taken his own life. Whatever the case, both stars will be dearly missed by family, friends, and fans of Street Outlaws. The show most certainly seems plagued by misfortune, and for the crew of the Midwest streetcars, it was no different. One incident in 2015 could have resulted in some serious injuries or even death, had the crew not been fortunate enough to dodge a bullet. 
quite literally. During the incident in question, an unknown gunman, who for some reason held a vendetta either against the shop or the show, fired off 11 shots at the workshop's building. Fortunately, the incident happened at night, when no one was present inside. The owner of the shop and chief of the crew, Sean Ellington, reported to the police that the same apparent suspect approached and stalked his home. Another incident took place, possibly related to the shooting, involving a motorcyclist and a member of the Midwest Streetcar's crew. During this incident, the motorcyclist told the crew member he knew who he was and flashed a handgun. Fortunately, nobody was hurt, but as of yet, police could not locate or identify any suspects. Due to all the controversy and attention the show has caused, one of the frequent stars and drivers, family man Derek Travis, was let go from his day job. Travis stated in an interview that his employer at the time was not fond of his involvement in the supposed illegal racing, and this eventually led him to fire Derek from his job as a technician. After a short period of difficult times, and with everyone now aware of the illegal activities in which Travis involved himself, he eventually got back onto his feet. Derek confirmed that he is now working in far better position with more pay and could not be any more satisfied with how things are going in his life. His current employer is now completely aware of his after-hours activities and doesn't seem to have a problem with it. Now, Derek once again juggles street racing, a 60-hour-a-week day job and being a full-time dad. Despite now realizing that the show is something of a fraud, since the racing events are technically legal, we hope you will continue to enjoy watching Street Outlaws. At least the races aren't rigged, and the competition remains as real as ever, supplying endless action, drama, and suspense. Not to mention, what other show packs so many sexy muscle cars into 40 minutes of high-octane action? Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.